Hello all, welcome to the Lunar Sea Spire Cartoon Fan Podcast. This is episode 286, and today we'll be talking about In Dreams and Bismuth Casual from Steven Universe Future. I'm GC13. I'm Isabel. I'm Sophia. And I'm David. So, I finally got one right. I finally had a correct prediction about something in a trailer being a dream sequence. Although, to be fair, since we knew the episode was called In Dreams, they may as well have had somebody in the trailer (laughs) saying, We wanted to include another dream sequence in this episode, so that's what it takes for me to get it right. Don't, you're giving yourself a pat on the back for being able to read. <laughs> I, 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 um, yeah. <laughs> Steven, you know, I had a prediction that Steven would appear in this episode, and it turned out that was the case, so. Correct, David. Your, <laughs> your fortune-telling skills never fail. Uh, yeah, I'm just like, uh, the great, oh crap, what was, uh, what was Steven playing as a robot? The great, uh, Zoltar. Zoltron. Zol- no, yeah, Zoltron. No, no. The great Zoltron. Z- Almost Zoltron. as great as Zoltron. Mm-hmm. Hey, I'll take my wins where I can get them. I'm really bad about predicting dream sequences, so that's what it takes, okay? Anyone else here with this episode get the feeling that maybe it's a little bit critiquing the fandom? Just a little bit. They do that from (laughs) time to time, yes. Mm. You know, I was actually, I think it was with um, the last episode that either Camp Piney Hearts appeared in or some other similar episode where I was reading an interview with Rebecca Sugar and they also asked her like, hey, are you guys like kind of like poking fun at the fans for the way that they react to your show? And Sugar was actually like, no, it's actually like how the Crooniverse sort of feels about this stuff. So I feel like sometimes these things also come from them. So like, yeah, when <laughs> Par- when they're when both Paradon and Steven were like, I mean, it's really, you want to draw the comparisons because like it's even the Camp Piney Hearts show is like, it's also their extended season. What, what was the title of this one? It wasn't Future. It wasn't Camp Finding Hearts Future, but it was something it's like, like ne- that. like Next Generation, I think. Right. But I feel like it's sort of how the creators the, or the Crooniverse sort of feels about just the type of shows they watch, too. Yeah, and I... I Paradox storyboarding. <laughs> I was going to ask, like, where did she learn to draw? But I sort of answered it pre podcast recording that gems do have a whole lot of free time not having to work or sleep or well and paradox yeah. uh, a genius and fantastic as she you know <laughs> proudly proclaims so yeah i bet she watched a lot of how to draw manga youtube videos <laughs> <laughs> i really liked how paradox was portrayed in this episode because early on it's like oh paradox how dare you when she's ignoring Steven because he finally is trying to open up to somebody and she's like, okay, shut up and press play. But (laughs) that's because she can't realize the things are going on with Steven. But when she sees in that dream, like him explicitly saying, I am not okay, she has the response that we wanted her to have early on in the episode. And so that was very cathartic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Both of these episodes were great, actually, for like, they took two episodes to be nice to Steven. This is, this is our hope spot. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I was really proud of Peridot for her her maturity. Like, she's never really been good at picking up social cues, and that's fine. But, like, when the signs are obvious, she she knows how to be a good friend. It was so sweet. Like, I still cry a little bit thinking about it, about their hug. Like, and, Par- and the, voice actri- yeah. the voice acting was so good. So good. Yeah. Well, and don't forget visorless Peridot. I mean, <laughs> yes! that's when you know the moment's <laughs> real, right? Her eyes oh. color confirmed, which was a huge surprise to everybody. They're green. <laughs> yeah, that was just, that was really touching. They um, are a dark I'm green. glad they waited mm-hmm. for this moment that was just like this mm-hmm. really small, really sweet, really, you know, touching moment. Yeah, but I have a really important question. How are they attached to her fade? <laughs> well, she's just apparent, apparently just like balancing them like Neo in the Matrix the whole time, right? Like there's they're like just l- a little suction there. cup on like the sides of her temples. You know how you have those like eyeglasses where they don't have the little hooks over your ears? It's like a suction cup on your forehead. It can't be for Peridot because one, her gems on her forehead and two, the glasses don't cover her forehead. But like, I'd like to imagine a little suction cup. You know, repurpose for maybe like a Nerf dart or something. <laughs> I was just looking at how Garnet's visor also sits on her face, but I guess Garnet's no, nose is a little more hooks. prominent than Peridot's. Oh, does she have, does it go behind her ears? Yes. Do gums have ears? <laughs> yeah, she's pulled out her whole glasses before and it's been like an actual pair of glasses. Oh, okay. 
Fake fan, David. I'm disappointed. Fake fan? <laughs> I mean, I'm just gonna say, their bodies and their visors are both projections from their gem, so they are where their gem wants them to be. Actually, no, her new glasses, though, aren't like that, aren't they? They're more like... I don't know about her new glasses. Okay. I don't know about her new glasses. I mean, d- did anyone else... I mean, I-, I had seen Stefan in the trailer that they put out, but I was... I was not prepared for how disturbing he would be in the episode itself. <laughs> I, that's that's a really interesting idea of masculinity that you have there, Stephen. Like, did you watch a lot of Johnny Bravo? <laughs> like, what? I mean, and he's had this picture of himself in the future since so many birthdays. But I was so happy to see it realized this way. Like, those eyebrows were hilarious. And also hearing Zach Callison put on that, like, sexy man voice was... Oh Incredible. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, it was terrible, but in the best possible way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I mean, man, just seeing Camp Piney Hearts realized without any of the, you know, like TV static in the way was just amazing. I mean, we had talked before about how we wanted to see these shows within shows and spinoffs, but I, I think this was a pretty good way to get it realized. Although having Yellow Diamond show up as a pineapple and <laughs> I, I don't know what any of that means reading into yeah. the- that symbolism is a little bit harder like like the dog copter floating off and then the gems floating off like you can yeah, kind of piece easy. together there like steven mm-hmm. afraid of losing his childhood or losing his family but the i don't mm-hmm, i don't get yeah the diamonds that. i can't tell if it's just like past trauma because you know the in- giant injector is there too or right. you know is it I still wonder if he has some problem with the diamonds that's not being said at all. But, you know, maybe not, because in the skating episode following this one, he brings up White Diamond again and the fact that she t- tore his gem out of his body. So that's clearly on the forefront of his mind a lot these days. Yeah, he's, he's <laughs> like, well, yeah, let me just bring up my deepest trauma to two <laughs> complete strangers. <laughs> he's trying to be relatable. <laughs> that one time my grandmother tried to kill me. <laughs> <laughs> well, all the stress comes from his mother's side, you know. Well, no, he d- we they did have the DeMeo incident, but that kind of turned out okay. <laughs> I yeah. mean, it's 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 hard to Andy. match the stress level of an intergalactic alien empire and your racist it's- uncle. <laughs> yeah, like your yeah. racist uncle, you know, you can get a restraining order or redeem him because it's Steven Universe. <laughs> I'm just imagining Andy and White Diamond together at the table for Thanksgiving, both of them all a little bit liquored up, and both finding that they have a lot of opinions in common. <laughs> <laughs> they both think that there are some no. inferior species. Yikes. You see, I would like oh my God. to know where in the world you're going to get the volume of liquor required. <laughs> <laughs> the gems have an intergalactic uh, empire full White of Diamond. gems with nothing better to do with their time right now. Okay, but okay, no, actually, <laughs> all I can hear beings. is Pearl saying, "I'm drinking tonight." <laughs> Stop. Well, like human beings take up brewing as like a little side hobby. Like I could imagine gems just doing it, not yeah, drinking Captain it, Picard just style, doing you know? it. Like Pearl has all that <laughs> toilet paper, <laughs> so clearly if there's an interest. There's a market for doing pointless human activities. It was <laughs> for you anyway. Ah. <laughs> uh. I mean, I, I love that. Here, uh, try using this. Seems to work for Pearl. Yeah, Steven's like, maybe later. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do we want to transition to the next episode? Oh, we can, uh, we can talk about Bismuth yes. Casual a little. Yeah, uh, I have... So, a question. Like, Steven, shouldn't the human you should really be trying to form a connection with is a therapist? <laughs> like, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Like, all these random teens is fine and dandy, but, like, let me get you a business card. I keep Come asking, on. is that lady from Pickle Rick available? <laughs> <laughs> get those deep insights. Yeah, man, Stephen is, a uh, you know, at least he opened up to Peridot last episode, and now he's revealed similar feelings to bismuth i i wonder if those are gonna come up next with the core crystal gems or what but seemingly if he addresses it with enough people everyone will at least be aware i mean already 
all of the human like residents were aware of Steven's problems because he forced them to be aware of them in a bubble. <laughs> um, there's not many characters left who don't know he's experiencing this trauma. And I don't think the gems were that dumb when they heard what the cactus said. So, yeah. Yeah, like, mm -hmm. I'd like a little bit of... Well, no, because every time somebody's prodded Steven to say if he's okay, he's completely shut them down, right? So he kind of has to acknowledge there's a problem and want to fix it and acknowledge that he needs others' help to fix it. Because he's not usually the one who likes accepting help. He's usually the one who does the helping. I'm going to say this, though. When, when he was having that conversation with Bismuth, and she said that, oh, I don't want to hold Pearl back. She's doing her own thing. I'm like, oh, you just said the exact wrong words for Steven to hear right now. But she really <laughs> turned it around. Well, I mean, like, Pearl was there to do her own thing versus Connie was there to hang out with Steven, which is what Bismuth said. So that, that kind of just followed a train of logic. Yeah. But also, by Pearl, Biz, Pearl, Bismuth, and Pearl, holy crap. <gasps> Best field. Five years of shipping discourse I have witnessed firsthand in this fandom, and nobody was expecting this. Nobody. Which is funny because Bismuth was, you know, flirty with Pearl from the moment that we met Bismuth, and yes. even in the art book, Rebecca had explicitly yeah, written like, that Bismuth sort mm -hmm. of has that relationship with Pearl. Everybody's mm -hmm. flirty with Pearl. Well, like, come on. <laughs> it's hard for the gems not to be, sure. <laughs> gems, humans, anybody. A pearl's just a catch. Absolutely. But yeah, I mean, there's something right about this. Yeah, I could not be more thrilled. I didn't see the episode before I heard the chatter about it, and so I thought they were going to fuse, which was like, I was just like, oh man, I can't believe I found out about that. But then the episode ends with, obviously... Their relationship is not that advanced yet. Although, not that gems can't fuse before they get romantic, but still. So, I'm still waiting on that. <laughs> Six episodes to go on that. It's funny, the episode <laughs> was eight. starting in Bismuth was all sheepish. And I'm like, oh, it's because, you know, she's never hung out with humans. And then Pearl's like, no, 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 unbutton your shirt. And I'm show like, off that cleavage. <laughs> <laughs> no, show off them forearms, which, like, to <laughs> lesbians, that's the real. That's, that's the big that's deal the real. <laughs> and like, And I'm like, oh, that's interesting. And But then they, like, totally just went for it. And I was like, no way. No way! That was, like, I think my biggest takeaway from these two episodes was, like... No way? <laughs> no way! Like, <laughs> finally, there's there, after two billion Pearl ships that have, <laughs> like, had a chance in the past five years, this is the one that, that gets canonized. And honestly, I'm perfectly thrilled with this. You're it's Pearl thickly yeah. thrilled with it? Yes! I don't have to worry about speaking nicely, GC. This is a podcast. You can edit it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not live. This is speaking a video. of imperfect. I really. I mean, there is nothing more succinctly like Rebecca Sugar feeling than having Pearl's favorite song be the Cam's Camshaft jingle. Like that was <laughs> amazing. <laughs> There's just something so like I could just see like past Rebecca Sugar writing a web comic in this same like. There's just it's so. I don't even know. It's just so personal and just funny. And yeah, it already fits in with what Pearl is, but it just reminded me of also that webcomic that Sugar had that was like the two brothers and then they like one of them got in an accident or something and they could only bond over the Simpsons. But it's that same idea of like this weird like little cultural icon that connects you when it's not quite sensible and for it to be like an ad but then it later connects Bismuth and Pearl in that dance is just really, really overly sweet. And I, I love that. It is. And it's also so Pearl. It's so Pearl. She's like, <laughs> I'm going to get into human things. I'm going to get into human things such as toilet paper and <laughs> radio commercial jingles. <laughs> no, it, it's very Pearl, but I, I don't know. There's just something about that scene in the car when she's like, oh, I love the song. Turn it up. It's like. I hear Dee Dee there, not Pearl. It's the strangest <laughs> thing. <laughs> maybe maybe Dee Dee was, like, really identifying with that moment. I mean, it's a really catchy song. Yeah, well, I feel like of, of all the voice actors that have merged with their characters the most, I feel like Dee Dee definitely took on Pearl the most with, like, at least at Comic-Con appearances and stuff. So, uh, yeah, I definitely, I feel that. I hear every season Dee Dee has to go in for nose reduction surgery because it keeps growing. Oh my god. <laughs> they keep converging. 
<laughs> well, I'm saying, like, when you have to characterize, like, four different characters with the same name and have them have different personalities just conveying from your voice, like, you have to kind of solidify your personal idea of what the personalities are like. So, that She's got sense. the moves, though. She's got the moves. Oh, no, no, Stevani had the moves in this episode. Oh, that skating grief. sequence yes. was gorgeous. I mean, the song was amazing. I love a callback to, like, last one, mm -hmm. Out of Beach City, where we had, like, another human song, and, like, these episodes had those parallels. But, I mean, Stevani, holy yeah. crap. It was they just... They stole the yeah. show. Yes, and... <laughs> oh, my goodness. Love Yeah, love I've them. never love felt, them. like, it's such a such a pure representation of what feeling yourself looks like like they were feeling themselves and it tied in so well with the song too like what a perfect choice oh, yeah and then then they were holding themselves Only i can do that yes right which of course totally works was the song written for this episode or was it just a song no it's a existed? song that already exists yeah, yeah. yeah. but that that singer is also the person in the new credits theme so there's definitely, mm -hmm. um, which that one was obviously written for Steven Universe, so I, I love that the Universe has these connections, though, to other songwriters. It's awesome. Interesting. Interesting. So, I want all of you guys to put on your tinfoil hats, because I have <laughs> like Steven conspiracy. Needs. Oh. Um, <laughs> yeah, ha ha ha. I didn't completely forget about that joke. So, I am 100% convinced, and I will put money on this, that Ooh. the Starlight Roller Rink in the episode is based off of the Moonlight Rollerway in Glendale, California. The interior looks exactly the same. I went there for my last birthday on their LGBT night, which they have every single Wednesday. And so, and it's like really like culturally significant. It's like one of the, it's super old. It was there since the 40s. And all of like LA LGBT know about it. And roller rinking is like, it's just gay. Inherently. <laughs> Inherently. And so... Does it have the same window thing that DJ Sour Cream was behind? Yes, but it's on the corner of the wall, not in the middle of it. But I imagine the... the well, that's probably enough. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But the skate rental's in the same place. The snack area's in the same place. The bathrooms are in the same place. Although the last time I was there, they were not gender inclusive. So... Right. Steven Universe is already doing better, and it's all... <laughs> right? Yeah, I saw a lot of excitement about that one. Yeah, and it was funny because I went there on my birthday with two other trans people there. And I remember it's like, they have a LGBT night every Wednesday and they don't have gender inclusive bathrooms, which was interesting. But it was still a fantastic place. You can look it up, like, like moonlightrollerway.com and look at the interior pictures because it looks exactly the same. And it's funny because, like, you even enter in the same spot that Steven did. And it was, like, I, I like, freaked out because I felt like the, the crew was spying on me. Because <laughs> I also had not skated before when I went there. But I'm a lot more, like, gung-ho when it comes to new experiences. So I was just constantly falling on my face the whole time. <laughs> and endangering the lives of those poor gays minding their own business. <laughs> like, I was trying to skate backwards and do all the dances and stuff within the first ten minutes. But... That's beside the point. Look it up. I'm right. See, this is the amazing part. I'm of this. right. The specific references in Steven Universe do exactly that, though, right? Like, you feel called out, and you're like, oh my <laughs> goodness, they've had the same experiences as me, which I love that. Or his, he fell straight on his face and then slid a little bit. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that, that may have been me a little bit. Oh, God. I was, I was waiting for Steven to say, like, you know, that that's okay. I, I could be thrown at this building hard enough to reduce this whole place to a crater, and I would be just fine. Falling on my face <laughs> is going to do nothing to me. It's just the internal emotional uh, destruction yeah. where it hurts. Yeah, he, he has internal damage. His hurt is on the inside. Well, yeah. Like, when I went, <laughs> it was so crowded that, like, if you tripped and fell, you were going to take a couple people with you. Or they would have to get out of the way in time. <laughs> But it was great. Like, there were people dancing like Stevani and just absolutely feeling themselves the whole night. It was great just watching them just go off. Or, like, they'd have, like, these two people do, like, a little dance in the middle of the rink and everybody watched, and that was fantastic. Like, if anybody lives in the Southern California area, Moonlight Rollerway. 
unforgettable experience. And it's from Steven Universe. <laughs> yeah, I feel like someone needs to put together a travel package for all the locations in Steven Universe from the like <laughs> actual beach city and the actual Funland arcade to We just you know, need to we need to start shipping out as seen on Steven Universe signs to these places. <laughs> see if we can get them to display them. <laughs> That'd be, a, that'd be a big travel fee. Like, you'd have to go to Korea, and then you'd have to go to the East Coast, and then the West Coast, and then the middle of Russia, because that's where people are theorizing the Lunar Sea Spire is. Yeah. No, no, that's where the galaxy warp is supposed to be, even though it makes no sense for it to be anywhere but <laughs> off the East Coast. Right. <laughs> also, I don't think you can paddle three hours to Beach City from the middle of Russia, so... <laughs> <laughs> maybe lapis is just like really fast <laughs> she did okay. fly back to homeworld so that's clearly like right. past the speed of light but we'll see <laughs> another thing i noticed in the background the name of the pizzeria is i think angstromboli or something oh yes i was looking Angst. at that <laughs> oh the angst was hidden <laughs> yeah everywhere. sub literal uh-huh. literal subtext nice i did not <laughs> think that <laughs> well this kind of this kind of goes with my last comment where it's funny how in the original show Steven gave Lars a hard time for caring so much about looking cool to impress and to make friends and now Steven's doing the same thing uh. it's like man being a teenager kind of sucks doesn't it Steven <laughs> doesn't <laughs> it Steven <laughs> so yeah these episodes were happy and but yet mm. we already know that Steven and Connie are probably going to uh <laughs> not be okay in a very yeah. soon episode which is uh, oh. terrible <laughs> well i mean steven's clearly like wanting to pursue a relationship with connie but having absolutely zero idea how to even begin that like like you guys are seeing it too right like because when he was being stefan right and how the what was her name jasmine jasmine i thought yeah how Jasmine turned into Connie right before he was about to kiss her. And I'm like, mm, right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I wanted to ask about that moment too. Like the fact that she was obsidian. What does that mean? Is it as symbolic as like, you know, when Miss Maheshwaran was yellow diamond, that only mildly made sense too, just because he was with Connie. And so I think he's a little afraid of Connie and how she'd react to him wanting to do that. Because I don't, I don't even know if he's honest with himself that he does have those feelings. Well, yeah, that's been there, hasn't it? Where he isn't quite sure how he even feels about Connie because he always wants it to be... It's like sweet and innocent, but also he just assumed, you know, when he was 14 that they were going to be together and she'd be the president. So there's like... Yeah, but like in a very sweet sort of um, little kid way where it's and like, he's not a little we're going to get anymore. married when we grow <laughs> up. But now he's like a hormonal teenager and suddenly getting all these feelings and he's like oh, wait a minute, and then <laughs> realizes what, like, romantic love actually feels like, and he has no idea how to process it, especially since they've been friends for so long. Like, that's hard. That's hard to be like, am I willing to jeopardize this entire relationship for a chance to make it different? That makes sense, why she would be obsidian. I just, I, I thought it was like the yellow diamond being a pineapple. It's like, yeah, I guess she's a little spiky on the outside, but then <laughs> what similarity does blue diamond have with sour, the dolphin? Sour and hurting the inside of your mouth on the inside? Like, <laughs> yeah, terrible yeah. on pizza on the inside? If I had to pick Commonly a fruit for yellow diamond, I guess pineapple would work, besides the color similarities. Yeah, new Spongebob remake. <laughs> yeah, people really, really caught on with that. Who lives in a pineapple down by the river? <laughs> that blue diamond dolphin was so much more cursed and awful looking, though. Especially that they kept the hair loop, which just doesn't yeah, make any yeah. sense. Because it's supposed to be resting on, like, her body, but instead it's just free perfectly formed, free-floating. Yeah. Maybe it's, like, like part of her skeleton. <laughs> they don't have horns. skeletons. <laughs> well, yeah, but they have well. like, hard structures and soft structures. Yeah, right? yeah. So they clearly have some form of skeleton. Like the gems, yeah. when you touch them, I mean, they can like... get bruised. Yes, they can. We've get seen bruised. Paradox yeah. get bruised, so. Yeah, and if you like, you know, if a gem touches something, it doesn't clink like a piece of metal, <laughs> right? Like they yeah. have, they have squishy, and then like structure on the inside. <laughs> oh man, do I have any other comments in here? I want to know what body Jasmine Perry 
in that episode. Like, <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, that's <laughs> pretty yeah. dark. That was it's really dark. like a squirrel or something. No, but like, it, it was, was a human body. if you assume it's a human body. No, I it was a human body. I want, I miss more jokes like that. <laughs> that reminded that me of like so a dark. Universe. I was like, no way. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it was like a mannequin. <laughs> it was it was a, it was a, an abused CPR mannequin. That's what it was. Which let me say, being in in medicine, they're all abused. Well, since we're doing SpongeBob references, why why couldn't it have been a health inspector? <laughs> they killed the health inspector. Oh, I was thinking of Ratatouille, <laughs> that health inspector. Wait, Although did they, they kill, kill the him. health inspector in Ratatouille? No, they didn't kill oh, him. No. They tied him up and kidnapped him, but then they released him, which is why the restaurant shut down. Oh. Man, I forgot almost all of the plot of Ratatouille, except that, you know. I've recently rewatched Ratatouille. Oh, okay. It's really good. Yeah. Yeah. So, any any further thoughts, Isabel? Uh, no. Just looking forward to next week, but it's it's gonna go downhill from here. Yikes. Oh yeah, <laughs> this was our this was our hope spot. This was to make us think that Stephen is finally getting where he needs to be, but he is not there yet. Oh yeah, Stephen has a long way to go before he hits rock bottom, and he's got to mm -hmm. hit rock bottom before he's gonna be able to. Uh, which I'm surprised he's not already really close to there already because he did kind of like insult the gens to their face not kind of to their face you know trapped a bunch of people in a bubble like threatened the life of people like pearl had to step in and defend pink pearl from steven like that's pretty intense well one of the episode titles we got that we didn't get to talk about last week is that steven is visiting a real hospital for the first time so maybe he's a mm. uh, a psychiatric maybe... hospital <laughs> well <I don't> <laughs> can we put this boy on a 5150 uh, but he, uh, yeah, he needs something. Although, you know, strangely enough, like like we've said, he's he's gotten positive affirmation and, and stuff from everybody. But obviously, at some point, that isn't enough when your internal struggle is, is, is greater than that, right? Like, if he's dealing with problems. But the thing is, like, everyone externally is seemingly supportive of him, but clearly he's dealing with more than that. And I feel like we still need more of that to come out. Like, we know that he feels like he's being left behind, almost like Spinell, and also mm -hmm. they really need a Spinell moment coming up, because it really feels like his mm -hmm. problems connect with hers, although he wasn't trapped for thousands of years alone. But he, he really needs to come out about some of these other things that seem to be hidden under the surface in his dreams, and, you know, because he's, he's way too angsty just for people, you know, abandoning him, even though they're not quite abandoning him yet, except for literally Lars, but, you know. Yeah, I think he has to kind of come to terms with all the things. Because remember in um the episodes where where he he sacrificed himself to Homeworld and came back and Connie was upset with him and stopped talking to him. And he was so upset about that and like engrossed in that and all the other gems were like, oh, we saw something super traumatizing on Homeworld. And it's like, Steven prioritized Connie first. But like, let's also talk about the traumatizing stuff on Homeworld. Right, I think that stuff did affect him too. Like, mm -hmm. like it's been the personal, and that like now it's all culminating. Not only does he have all this personal stuff, he's afraid that he's not human enough. And he, of course, we've had that plot going since, well, since Stephen and Connie showed off Stevani to Greg, and then we had the mm -hmm. whole human, human thing, beings. him clutching his gem at the end. And you know, now we've had that carried here to he doesn't know how to, you know, hang out with Connie's friends or introduce themselves to him. Without bringing up his trauma, <laughs> he has all these things going on, uh, and we've got eight more episodes. We got eight more. Yeah. So here we go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's it's really easy to connect with teenagers. All you have to do is complain about work or school, and then floss, and they like you. So <laughs> <laughs> good tips. <laughs> uh, and then floss. Uh, <laughs> and then no, I'm not joking. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why Marco stunt flosses all the time. Anyway, I'm worried about Steven next week, but we'll be watching to see uh see what happens to him. I'm uh I got a feeling it's not gonna be as happy as this week was. Until then though, I'm GC13. I'm Isabel. I'm Sophia. And I'm David. Leave us a review on iTunes. Later everybody. Our opening and closing music is by Mark Soto. 
For more cartoon-related content, please visit LunarCeasefire.com.